looking into God's purpose, because in Ezekiel 28 it says he was a covering cherub on the mountain of God, and he had nine stones on his body, which were reflecting the nine levels of transformation of God's people into perfection and holiness, and he was supposed to be let that light shine out from those stones out into the universe, so that man would be able to become like God, ascended into those steps from the fire stones of God. Now, we obviously find there's a vacancy. So we can come and make an arc, a connection, so God will, presence will come, we can look into the things of God around the arc. So I come every day, I mean, I love that place. You know, and we can come. Hebrews 9 3 says, Behind the second veil, there was a tabernacle, which was called the Holy Holies, having a golden altar of incense, the Ark of the Covenant, covered all sides with gold, which was which had a golden jar holding the manna, the food to do his will, if you like. Aaron's rod, which budded, the symbol of authority, and tables of the covenant, tablets of the covenant. And above it was the cherubim, the glory of overshadowing the mercy seat. So there's a picture of it. So in the ark was the man with the tablets and the man's rock. So when I first came into this, that's what God showed me. He showed me that these things I could come and align myself with and engage with. Now, I learned what they meant. So the man, the bread of life, is the will of God. As Jesus said, I have food to eat that you do not know. John 4, 32. John 4, 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. So I can come and find that will. You know, the living sacrifice to find out what his perfect will is and prove that will and I work it. Now, John 6, 27 says, Do not work for food which will perish, but for the food which it draws to eternal life. So there's a whole lot of things that we can do to try and sustain us which will have no earthly, no heavenly value. And Jesus said to people, don't do things to be seen by men, because you'll get your reward in full. You know, those who pray on the street corners wanted everyone to hear their own prayers because their motive was to be seen. Well, they were seen and they got the reward in full. They have no heavenly reward. So let's make sure we're not motivated by what people think about us and try to please people. You don't need to be people pleasers, you need to be God pleasers. And therefore, we only need to do the will of Him who sent me, which is what Jesus said. So make sure that what we do lasts and has eternal value and will get added to our scroll as wood, not wood and stubble, but gold, silver, and precious stones. Because all the other stuff won't last as the gold, silver, and precious stones. It's what's going to happen to it. It's going to be consumed by the fire. So the tablets are not just stone now. Our hearts are the tablets he writes on. John uh, Jeremiah 31 33. I will put my law within them, and on my heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. So now our hearts can be open, and He will write and unveil His will for us. And our destiny will be unveiled in our hearts, so the desires of our heart will be drawn towards that His will. And what's our destiny? So our desire will draw us if we allow Him to write it and unveil it on our heart by coming before the ark and open up our heart. So then I can see what the Father's doing. Aaron's rod gives me the authority of the anointing to bring the kingdom from heaven, which I've seen, into the earth through my life as a gateway. So I can administer the kingdom from the throne, my position of authority on the mountain, within the realm of the kingdom of God. So often people think of coming before the ark, and this is a picture where God is going to manifest in the middle of the cherubim. What he does, he just comes as the four faces of God. The lion, ox, the eagle, and the man. Because that was the representation. Why the cherubim? See the picture of the cherubim there. The picture of the cherubim there is a representation that's been religiously drawn. Because in reality, no one's actually seen the art. And in reality, it wasn't. The cherubim that there weren't just physical, made out of God. We're talking about living creatures, and the living creatures spent so much time looking into the presence of God that they became like who they looked at. So their four faces represented his. That's why they have lion ox eagle man as a cherub. Because God's manifestation in government is the four faces, 
kept looking, just like, wow, holy, 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 looking in, and they became like what they looked. So that's why they've got four faces. You know, not the one you see in the common pictures. So when we come before the tabernacle, we're literally coming to engage God in his presence. So we have there the four faces of God, which represents the four orders of government. So you have lion, ox, eagle, man. You have the lion representing the king, the ox representing the prophet, the eagle representing the apostle, and the man the priest. Now some other people teach different order in this. I'm just teaching you what God showed me back in 2012. Um, this isn't a modern thing for me. I've been on a journey to discover what it meant since then, 10 years. But he showed me his order, and it represents the name of God. So when we begin to come here, we're engaging the name of God. Yo, hey, but hey. And that name, when we begin to meditate on it, speak it, sing it, oh, I love singing. You know, once I discovered these notes I was talking about last night, <laughs> It, it, it drew me into actually what I'm actually singing is about Yoke Bar, the name of God. Mm. And I sing it all the time. I just love singing it. So we're brought into engagement with this very name. <coughs> so we can engage the governmental perspectives that the name means. So we can look into the lion perspective, or the prophetic ox perspective, or the apostolic eagle perspective, or the priestly man perspective. So when I come and look into the ark, I'm really looking at what the Father's doing, who he is, and what he's displaying. So I look at this four faces, I look into the name of God, and I look to see how the government of God will reveal my mandate for the day. What am I called to do today from the perspective of the king? Is there anything that needs order around my life so I can administrate it? Is there anything that needs to speak into the prophetic revelation of my life today so I can hear it and then begin to speak it? Is there anything that needs to come from the eagle perspective, which makes me soar up and see how I fit into the big picture, so I can see how God's purposes are aligned with the fullness of my destiny and His glory and His purposes? So Hebrews 10 7 says, Behold, I have come, and the scroll of the book is written of me to do the will of God. And that's what Jesus found when He kept looking into God's purposes to see what He was supposed to do every day, because it's written. In the scroll, and you can engage it, and then we know what to do every day. And it's a really cool do. You just have to come and present yourself as a living sacrifice. Okay, yeah, there's a bit of transformation goes in the way. Embrace that, embrace the fire, come, and then you can start to engage with what you're called to do today. Because how many people just drift through day the day? Come and have a time with God in the morning, it's not oh God, thank you. Look at me today. Yeah, I, I want to do what you want me to do today, but we don't really know what it is. So you sort of drift around hoping you might discover it. Sometimes you may do, because your spirit may lead you into some of those things. But actually it's much better when you start to administrate it yourself because you can start to frame your day according to what you see here. Mm. <laughs> so you can order your day according to it. Mm. And we'll do a whole session on that. Mm. <clears throat> so when he's written his things on my heart and my mind, as it says in Hebrews 10:16 then I begin to be led and directed towards those things. So our scroll of destiny gets revealed and unveiled to our hearts. As I said last night, you're not going to see it all in one go. You get it a day at a time. But you do get an overview at times that gives you where the direction is going. But every day is going to reveal what is my destiny today. You don't need to know what it is to tomorrow. As Jesus said, if you keep thinking about tomorrow, you'll worry about it. So keep engaging today. The desires of our heart get transformed, and we begin to add work that destiny, and it draws us towards it, and we want it. Then we have that scepter that says you can do it, because the scepter, according to Psalm 45, 6, is the scepter of your throne. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. We have authority to administrate it. So, Yohei Barpe, Y-H-V-E-H, um, it's often sort of spoken as Yahweh or Jehovah, because we put vowels in it to make us be able to say it. But you can't say Y-H-V-H very easily in English. Um, but in Hebrew, it had those symbols, which were the letters, which are not just a tiny thing for us. Our letters are very much A, B, C, D, and that, but it's more in the Hebrew language. So the Yo is a symbol of the hand, and 
denotes power and figuratively ownership and it represents the father. Hey it represents gentleness and means to behold, to show or reveal, it represents the Holy Spirit. And then you have this in the middle, this peg that holds it all together, which is where we come into it. Bar signifies a nail, a peg hook, and conveys the meaning of being nailed and bound together, which is why we need to be joined to the Lord and become one with him. And hey, divine breath, revelation, and light represents God's creative power, the living word, Jesus the Son. So if you put it all together and read it in English from right to left, behold the nail, behold the hand, or behold the nail hand, representing the power of the victory of the cross, where all this was brought back for us, what Jesus did in his sacrifice, so now we can come and sacrifice on behalf of what he's done and receive the revelation, the fullness of God's purposes in that. So we look into the manifest purpose of God, and we'll start to see the will and purpose of God for our lives. So we resonate with it. That food, I eat that manner every day, figuratively, I want to resonate with his will. So I'm a minor frequency, he's a major frequency, and when a minor frequency comes back to a major frequency, it gets transformed. So I align myself with his will and purpose. Then my heart will then draw me towards it. And I can receive my mandate to rule the days. What am I called to do? Sometimes very specific, sometimes I already have mandates that I'm authorized and he reminds me and directs me. Then I can begin to frame my world, our world, from the mandate we received. So I become a representation of the four faces of God on the earth, bringing full heavenly government. So I can act as a king and priest, royal priesthood, and I can bring prophetic and minister apostolic. Now, people are now using other words for apostle and prophet because of the connotation with the old five-fold ministry word. So they're now using a different word, which would be oracles for the prophetic and legislators for the apostolic, which is a description of what they do. They bring the oracles of God and they legislate those oracles on the earth as the kings and priests receive it in heaven. So we now can step into the presence of God. You know, I started looking into the second stage for me when the, I started looking at the OK Van Hay and the presence of God manifested in four faces, I looked into them. So I'm looking at, wow, I can see the kingly perspective. I can see the lion perspective. And I can see the ox and I can see the prophetic. And it's like, oh no, I'm seeing things totally differently now. Because I'm seeing things from looking into his governmental perspective and it changed how I thought and how I saw things. Because I'm open, I'm like, wow, look at this. So, and that was a wonderful stage that I got into and it opened up my whole perspective to see things from a heavenly, godly perspective rather than a natural one. Because once you see from above, it's very different from below. You know, you can be in a really black pit below and feel like I can never get out of this, everything's dark around me. When you look up there, it's a little black dot. Because <laughs> you're looking at a totally different perspective, it's like, what's happening? Actually, I can just step out of this, it's under my feet. But when you're in it, down here, and see it in this perspective, everything will be so dark and this one hard. That's why we must see from his perspective. So, I'm seeing this situation from his perspective of the king. I'm going to start decreeing, declaring change in this situation. I'm going to start prophetically calling myself out of this situation into what God's called me to. I'm going to be soaring as an eagle to see this from a totally different perspective. Because this pit I might be in at the minute, maybe something that the enemy's got in my life, and therefore I can see it's not God's purpose, and I can come out of it. Sometimes it may be a situation that I'm in to enable me to change and transform. So I don't want to get out of it until the transformation's taking place. So I can see how it fits in the jigsaw of my life. But then the great thing is you can step into his presence. And this is the most wonderful thing. I love it. All right. I can step into his presence and I'm now in his name. Because <coughs> I'm in the Yodhei Bahe. So now this is described as Yodhei Shin Bahe. And the Hebrew letter for Shin, S, is three little teeth things, which represents body, soul, and spirit. Us, in him. Now, in the Hebrew language, things can represent lots of different pictures, but this one represents being in his name, being in Jesus, in Yeshua, we're in him, therefore we have the power of eternity of his name. Mm -hmm. His name is a lucky charm to put on the end of your prayers, hoping that you're going to 
by saying in Jesus' name that somehow it's going to magically enable things to take place. That's it's just become a phrase that we use when we pray. In the name of Jesus. Well, actually, we need to be in the name of Jesus. In him. Therefore, carry the power to act on his behalf. What is the name of him? You know, you know, him. And you come out of him with power and authority. Yes. For everything he calls you to do according to his purpose, you now have power to act. And to bring the full government of God into play. Amen. Through the line, the obstacle of the man. Hallelujah. So now I'm in him and I'm in his omnipresence. So I've now got access to come outside of time and space to see what was in the past. Not in our past, or you can go back into your past and into things to see things, but into eternity. Because now eternity is in my heart. Because some of the things he writes on my heart is eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11, I think, it says eternity is in our heart. So the door to eternity is something we can step into. So we can step outside of time and space into his heart and eternity. We go back into the womb of his great influence. And it's a wonderful place to be because you start to see yourself where he sees you. And you can engage with that. The vast sum of the thoughts you have where you were created. There's no sin there. Because Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. So there's no sin. So we can see everything from a perspective at the beginning before sin. So if you saw everything from the beginning and saw every consequence of every decision you made, you would guarantee, I guarantee you, you change some of the decisions you made. So we have access to see things from this perspective that enables us to make daily choices based on what he shows us. Therefore, we can see the end from the beginning and bring the beginning into the end. So everything aligns with God's purpose. So we can see it from there. But we can't see the beginning if we keep looking at the end. So this is this diagram, this covenant, this eternal circle we we'll walk through. If we stand in the middle looking at what will be the end, then we've got to try and figure out how we can create the end. That's why we get in trouble. But if you look back into what was and face into eternity, because we're in him, if we step into him, we can go back into eternity, into his heart, and see things from the beginning. You see yourself at the beginning and see the purposes of God for you the day from the beginning. But then as soon as you walk through this, you're then walking back back into what is today. So you can then start to pray today on your mountain from what you've been into, what was, and then you begin to pray what will be so you can walk in align yourself with it. How great is that? You get the authority to train your day according to his purpose and will for you day. Rather than just drifting around and hoping everything will be okay. You can guarantee it will be okay. Because you are in charge to frame it out of what you see in him. And you carry the full power of his name and the full faces of God to do it. So this is the priestly function. This is the priestly function I shared yesterday of the order of Mark, isn't it? So as a priest, as a man, you can go back into do you then bring alignment with the government of God so that can be at work? So it's a wonderful place to do it. You can do this every day. So we see ourselves from his eternal perspective. And I, I like this little thing because God spoke this to me and said, This is what it's like. Like beings constructed from the desires of his heart, framed in his thoughts and spoken into existence. That's who we are. Like beings constructed from the desires of his heart. Framed in his thoughts and spoken into existence. And we, being made in his image, can do exactly the same thing. Start to be as creative beings of light to construct those things that we see in his heart, frame them by our thoughts and speak them into existence every day. It's very good. <laughs> and we feel and engage with our eternal identity, who we've always been. You know, we, we always knew in our spirit, but we got clouded by all the soul things, so we could never connect with it fully. This is where you can connect with it. It gives you just that willingness to be transformed. Because you see what you should be like. And then it's like, wow, I'll do anything. Take all this stuff away. I just want to be like you. And then we can choose to act from this revelation to frame our day every day. So seeing the end from the beginnings 
important so we can call things that be not as if they are. That's what God did and created everything. Romans 4 17. I call things that be not as if they are. So you can call things that be not as if they are. So as so things go around around your life that you don't like, start to change them. If there are things that you're doing right now that aren't what your destiny is, but you want to do it, start calling it out, framing it, calling it as if it was there. So we can decree, declare, prophesy from what what will be from what was, so that we can bring that into what is and then it will change what will be. So we can engage this whole thing. So we can essentially form this arc of kingly, priestly, heavenly government. And then we can bring the apostolic prophetic and the legislative and oracles to bring an arc, which then means we can have a reflection on earth as it is in heaven in our life. So our life will reflect heaven today. And it's every day, not once. This is a daily thing. There are fresh mercies every morning. We need to do this every day. So every day we're surrendered, not doing my own thing. Every day is a new day. That's why you have to start every day afresh. So the end of a, one day is the beginning of new. So we walk through that bigger of eight. And now we walk through it again and we walk back through it again. So you can do this. So let's do it. So I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, yeah, you may not get this everything first time, but I'm going to lead you through an exercise. On this exercise, feel free to be where you are and stay where you want to be. Because sometimes I'm just going to lead you through the whole process. You may not feel I'm not really ready to go back into eternity in the heart of God yet. It's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. Allow your spirit to determine where you're going to be. So you might want to just stay around the ark of the presence of God. You may just want to stay in the doorway of racing Jesus and feeling the atmosphere of heaven. It's fine. Don't feel any pressure to follow the, the journey. Let your spirit dictate where you need to stand. And just be free. You know, so ignore what I'm going to say if you feel my mistake here. Tune it out and just embrace the experience of engaging God. But heaven's open and Jesus is going to stand in the doorway waiting for us to come. So he's always there for us. And we can then go and engage around the ark of the presence of God. We can get scrolls given to us, mandates given to us. There are places where we can go to the scroll room and see the record of our destiny and things. If we have not done that, so maybe we've already done that, fine, we don't need to go through that door. You can keep going around the ark. We want to go to our mountain and find what our mountains are and our seven mountains that are below. And we want to be invested with authority. That throne, Jesus will invest you with a crown, a scepter, a mantle, so you can bring to rule. And then you can start administrating from your position of government. Now, if you think this is all a bit much, that's great. Don't, don't worry. Just Go with what you feel. So when we are around the presence of the heart, and we're, you may just feel, I want to resonate with you. I want to come into alignment with you. I want to need some of this manner that will give me some direction for my life. Fine, just stay with that. You may want to look into the four faces of God and just gaze. And it's like, Whoa. I don't know. Stay there, it's fine. You may want to step in so that you can look out. So when you're in, you can look out. So you can see out through the eyes of the lion. And you can speak out through the mouth of the lion. You might want to roar. I've roared before. And that was literally from my spirit just released a roar, which is to shape the order of my life. You know, you might want to soar with the eagle. You know, we'll have the breath of the ox. Breathe out the oracles of God over your life. Do whatever. If you get drawn to the man, then you may want to go back, go back into eternity and follow, hey, this is what I'm like, because I can freely go back into eternity. Just feel free. I'm going to leave the whole thing through the whole thing, all the way to the end, where you're on your mat and you start making declarations, but don't worry if you don't get that. You can go back over it, develop this as your own pathway. This is the pathway that I've developed in my life, the pathway of responsibility, so I've walked this way so many times over the last five years. This is so me. It's just my lifestyle. 
So I can go from any place to any place just by thought. Because I've been there before and now it's, it's my memory, it's my neural pathways are connected to it, it's who I am. You're not necessarily going to get that the first time. But, you know, I want to open up heaven, heaven's open here, so that you can have an experience that you need today that will be relevant to you. Okay, does that make sense? You know, if you can follow the whole thing through, wonderful, you'll have a great time. But you'll have a great time in each of the places if you feel led to stay there. Because you know, I know some people can get, oh, well, well, and you're sort of like, because I'm not going to go through this in five hours, because we could spend an hour in each place. You know, so I'm going to do it in a few minutes. So just go with that and stay so it's, it's familiar to you. So first thing, again, relax. No pressure. Close your eyes and begin to come into that place of relaxation where your brain waves are slowing down from figuring out, figuring out all the stuff I've just said. Because some of you are overloaded. You can see your, uh, your brains are frazzled a little bit. That's okay. Um, so come out of that place and just relax. So here we have a ladder. Jacob's ladder leading up to heaven. We have an invitation from Jesus to come up here. The door is standing open in the realm of heaven. Just by faith, choose to engage and step on that ladder, walk up the steps. Just open all your senses. You may see with a vision, you may feel, you may sense, you may just know by faith what you're doing. You may get strong impressions, they're all equally valid. Just go with how you're experiencing this yourself. So walk up through that veil of the way and just come and meet with Jesus who's standing in the doorway. Just choose to present yourself to him as a living sacrifice today and just give him permission to lead you in this journey, surrender to him, and just be open as he will lead you. Just feel the atmosphere of heaven, just sense how free, how open, how vibrant with life it is. You can breathe it in a few times. It's great just to breathe in the atmosphere of heaven so you're absorbing into your whole being, being part of the heavenly realm. And just begin to set the arm of the desire of your heart on coming for his presence around the arm of his presence. If you want to stay here and just rest in this place, just carry on with that. But Jesus, I would ask you to take each person that desires to come before your presence around the arm, take my hand, and just lead them through the veil of the truth. <coughs> Through the open veil of the light, come for your presence around the ark. As we stand before the presence of God, we just open up our hearts to allow you to begin to unveil and reveal who we are, our identity, our destiny, your will for us today. You may want to figuratively take the manner which is his will and food, which will sustain you in that work as well. You may just want to open your heart and allow him to begin to write on the tables and tablets of your heart. Just begin to resonate and come into alignment as you <coughs> surrender to his will and purpose. Thank you. 
just coming around his presence. If you have never received a mandate or a scroll or engage with your destiny, just be open to Jesus just to take you by the hand again and lead you through the door to come into the scroll room, a place where your scrolls are stored and recorded. Just allow him to take you to the place of your scroll so you can take that scroll, place it into your heart, where it will begin to unveil within your spirit the revelation of who you are and who you've been called to be. Received a scroll or an authorization, and how I'm just let Jesus bring you back before His presence, before His four faces. Just open that before His presence so that the revelation the lion of the ox, the ego of the man, will be revealed to you. Just look into that. Feel led, drawn to the man and the priestly function. <clears throat> Just step into him, step right into his name, into his presence. And as you're standing in him, start to look out. Look out, maybe through the eyes, eyes of the lion. Just let the spirit just lead you again, being in his name. Be 
Hey, Shiva. The sword eagle or the creep of the ox. the scepter in your right hand. 
simple but enable you to rule and to govern. You may give you other things, other symbols, sometimes weapons. Just be open to receive everything he has for you. And just find yourself, this is who you are, this is your governmental position, this is who you have always created to be. You may want to look now, sometimes you can look and see your earthly perspective, sometimes you can see the seven mountains that are around your throne, sometimes they're in a circle, sometimes they're a mountain range, just look. And if you see them or you feel them, then you just ask Jesus to give you insight and revelation about those mountains. The angelic canopy is above you. You have access to the angelic court. Angels will come as your scroll is unveiled. So what you're all trying to do today, you may feel some sign angels into your circumstances. Maybe to clear the atmosphere over one of the spheres that you govern, maybe your family or your workplace or the ecclesia. You may feel having seen one of the perspectives of the four faces of the Iwan law and decree order like the lion, or prophesy and call forth and decree like the ox, or begin to administrate a bigger picture and call things and be not as if they are. Just let your spirit be. You may want to frame your day by calling forth blessing and favor to follow you all the days of your life, to follow you today. Your angels and protection to go before you. Maybe some storms around your life you need to still by decreeing peace and still. Or some mountains or obstacles in your life that you may need to decree and declare and command them to move. You may want to use the keys of the kingdom to unlock situations which have been locked up. Or to unlock situations that you want to close your from. Just allow your spirit to direct you for these few moments. So just to pay your to Step back from that realm, step back through that veil into this realm. If you want to stay there while we have a break, then feel free to stay in this place. Just draw back, carry those things in your heart, make sure you journal them, remember them so you can revisit them. So this can become a lifestyle. You may be engaged in the presence of God, you may find your mandate is good. There you begin to administrate that to the kingdom of God can be manifested on earth as it is, as you have created it, as it is in heaven, through and around your life as a son of God. Take a 15 minute break now.